so the first outfit I am tackling is this red dress from 1948. I will flash a pattern cover illustration I was inspired by on the screen. The other day I interfaced all my pieces, cut everything out, searched everything, and so right now everything needs to be put together. What I am, what it will be interesting about this dress for me is that it is going to be buttons down the front, but only to about maybe the hip point, and then it's just a seam. And so I've never done a dress like that before, and so that is going to be interesting to see how that goes. Because I don't want to, shirt dresses like that had a, a zipper here on the side, but I feel like if you're going to have buttons down the front, just have them go low enough that you don't need a zipper. So I feel like having zipper defeats the purpose of having functional buttons. So I am trying to get the buttons low enough that I can actually work as a shirt dress, but not so low that like might as well have buttons all the way down the front. So I will check in once I work on this for a couple hours and break for lunch. Here is an update on this 1948 red dress. I have the skirt entirely finished here except for the hem and also the front placket here. So there's going to be one or two buttons. There's going to be two, maybe three, I'm not sure, buttons here. And then after those are sewn, I'll sew the rest of the center front seam. I don't want to do that until it's attached to the bodice that's sitting over there. And then I can do all the buttons at once and then make sure the overlap hangs nicely. I also have these nice big pockets here on either side of the skirt side seam here. I'm debating whether the pocket opening is a little big or not. I tried it on. It looked okay. But I guess we'll see once the whole garment is put together how this hangs and everything. I also finished the sleeves individually as well. I have the cuffs sewn on. They are hand sewn here and then folded up. And so when I have my arm in here, the points will go like that. I have sewed all the facings together here, so that's the back facing. The back piece has the center back sewn and the darts. Collars all sewn together. And then after lunch, I am going to do the front panels, attach, gather the fronts of the front shoulders, do all the facings and things like that. And then it'll be button time. And then after buttons, Hem. Here is an update on my red dress. I have the bodice, front bodice. I attach the collar and the facings. It's a little gather there at the shoulder underneath the collar. I covered all six of my buttons here. And so what I'm going to do is that tomorrow or later tonight, it depends, I'm just going to go take a break now. I'm going to sew the buttonholes and sew the buttons on. And then from my finger down, I will just sew the rest of the side, rest of the center front seam as a normal seam. The sleeves are all good. It lines up at the darts and at the side here. What I'll need to do is I'll need to do buttons. So on the button. So on the buttons and do the button holes. I'll need to attach the sleeves and hem. And then the red dress will be done. It is now the next day and my dress is done. Here's a close up of the buttons and the button holes here. There is six of them in total. I also, as you see, made a matching belt for the dress as well. And the sleeves are sewn in here. And yeah, this is the dress all finished. My next project is a 1940s inspired bishop sleeve blouse made out of this super, super cute Greek vase ins inspired print. I actually got this from Spoonflower, and so I got this custom printed. It's my first time working with Spoonflower fabric, and I actually like it. I will put the exact type of fabric I got on screen. I believe I 
chose their signature poplin and it's really nice medium weight um, nicely tightly woven cotton fabric and it washed really nicely these pieces aren't even ironed um, yet so I have my front facing my front piece sleeves cuffs back back facing and collar and in addition to cutting everything out I obviously surged it and did all the markings so all the darts are marked and for example on the cuffs here I have marked where they turn up and fold under. I like to do all my prep work at once because that's the step I like the least and so I like to do everything at once and then so I can start. I also interfaced all the appropriate pieces as well. And so right now it is almost noon. It's 11.56 and I'm going to go to lunch. Here is the blouse with all the darts sewn in here. I also turned up the hem of the blouse with the iron. The collar is all sewn here, as is the shoulder seams. And this is the back of the blouse with the dart sewn in. I also sewed the facings together. The next step is to sew the facings and the collar to the blouse there, and then Buttons right there, you can't really see because the exposure um, are my buttons, covered buttons ready to be sewn on. And then after the main blouse is finished, then I will tackle the sleeves. These will be gathered to the cuffs. The underarm seam will be sewn, and then the sleeves gathered to fit the arm side. Here is the blouse, mostly constructed. I have sewn on the buttonholes here. I am still working on covering the buttons, which will sit here. The collar is all done, the facing's all done. It is tacked at the shoulder seam. The blouse is also hemmed. And here's how it looks from the other side here. And also, I worked on the sleeves. I gathered them up to the cuffs here. And so what's left to do is sew the underarm seam and then finish that by hand and insert them. Then that plus the buttons in the blouse will be done. Here is the blouse all finished. I have my lovely covered buttons here and my collar all pressed. My sleeves are on here. The cuff on the inside is just whip stitched and gathered to fit the armhole. And here's how the blouse looks from the back here. I am very happy with it. It looks super cute. And that is another garment done. I have finished the bodice portion of this dress. The sleeves are all hemmed here. And the front has two darts here with a neckline. And the back has two darts. And the facing is all sewn and tacked in place at the shoulders. I am not going to do the soutage detailing along the neckline like the pattern illustration cover, just because I wanted to have just a solid black dress in my arsenal. I also finished the covered belt as well. Now I'm going to construct the skirt portion of this dress. I have made the two skirt panels for my skirt for my 1954 black dress. This is the front here. It has my inset pockets there. And this is the back. It, it, it has four gores just like the front and that's overexposed there you go that's better there and the only steps left to do is to sew these side seams together attach attach the skirt to the bodice and attach this zipper and then the dress will be done here is the finished dress it's super cute and i love this fabric i chose it's a cotton pique from mode fabric Let's see if it will focus on the, there we go. 
It's really cute. Um, this comes in a variety of colors. This is the um, Octrino Bird's Eye P Cotton PK. Very cool. And so here's the dress all finished. It has its raglan sleeve, scoop neckline, matching belt here. You saw earlier, and it has these pockets. These pockets might be a little low. Maybe we'll see. Maybe next time I'll raise them a little higher. Next time I make a dress like this. I'm not sure. We'll just see, like, once you actually get it on your body and see how low they are. But as you can see, I can... Where's my phone? My phone was somewhere. I don't know where my phone went. And so this is my camera charger here. So you see, totally disappears there. My phone's not much bigger than this. So, yeah. Very cool, and I also did a machine sewn hem just like the hem on the sleeves, and here it is from the back. It has a zipper, and there you go. And now we have another garment checked off the list, and I brought my stuff out that was outside on the couch inside to lock up the studio for the night, and the cat decided to join me, and as soon as I brought the stuff inside, she's like, oh, yes, my cave, my things, my petticoats. So. I have started on the next project, which is remaking my 1953 emerald green dress that I actually made in a video here on the channel. This is the wool serge that I got in the mail earlier in this vlog. And here is the bodice all cut out, interfaced, and serged. I also have the pockets here in the ironing board cut out. I cut out the main portion of the pocket from some black cotton and then faced it with the wool because having like four layers of wool um, that would be a little thick at the waist seam. So the waist seam is up here and this is the pocket opening. I faced it and then I just over zigzag stitch on machine with the wool there and then serge all around these pieces and I'm in the process of serging my skirt pieces and so I just did the back panels then I have to do the side back side front and front panels and over there is the strip of fabric that I have set aside to make the matching covered belt here is the bodice of my 1953 remake completed. Sorry for the air conditioning. It is very hot outside. It is laying so much better and nicer than the first time around where I used a much thicker fabric. The sleeves are hemmed by a machine here. And then as you see, I have the skirt cut out right here. And then that'll be the next step, obviously. And then there's the back. These wrinkles won't be there because it'll actually be pinned properly. There you go. And then that's the lower portion of the skirt there. So I'm gonna make up the skirt and then make the belts and then attach everything together. It has now been a couple days, but my remake of my 1953 Admiral dress is done. I am really happy with how this turned out. The points here look much sharper than they do on my original dress that I made. I have a covered belt here, and I have the skirt is all hemmed, and I got my pockets here, as always, and then it has a center back zip, which you can see there. Yeah. I will have to wear a, make sure to wear a slip underneath this because it is wool, 100% wool, so um, don't want it to irritate um, anything, but another garment. Checked off the list. Here is some progress on the 1950s Fire Nation dress. I haven't shown a lot of footage of me making it because it's the exact, almost the exact same as the previous dress I made, the green one. It has the same neckline and everything, same pieces, except all I did is I shortened these sleeves um, maybe about by about five inches or so. Um, the sleeves came to about um, like the t-shirt length on me about mid bicep and I wanted the sleeves to come kind of just a little off the shoulder here 
and and just covering the shoulder just enough that it covers my shoulders and I don't get sunburned, but I'm not so long that it's like a full like sleeve, if that makes sense. I also finished the matching covered belt that goes with it. In addition to this covered belt, I am also making this covered belt, I'm gonna wear with it like normally, like as just like a vintage dress. But for the Fire Nation look, I decided to pull out this pattern from 1961 and I'm gonna make a sash. I've made this sash a couple times before. I've even made this dress before. But this sash pattern is really nice. I like the length of it, the width of it. And I have pulled out this pinwell corduroy, which is left over from a previous project, a dress I made on this channel. And I'm gonna use this corduroy here to make a sash. And this color of the corduroy is, let's see, is this gonna be any better? The light is kind of messing with it. Yeah, you can kind of, kind of see it. Yeah, um, the color on camera is like, looks like they're the same color, but in person, the corduroy is much deeper in tone. It's like a cranberry color versus the dress is more of a maroon color. And so once I have the sash on, it's a nice bit of um, contrast and texture. Here is the finished 1950s Fire Nation dress. Now you see um, the, because it's not, you know, the dead of the afternoon, you can see the contrast between the corduroy sash and the rayon dress better. And here is a close up of the sash. It is a little, um, shorter than the sashes I've made before before just because I forgot when I was cutting out that I have to like flip the pattern piece over in order to get it to, uh, like um, sew it on the diagonal and the center back seam and so it's a little shorter but that's okay and then I took the sash off here and then this is what it looks like with just the belt you see there is a little bit of gathering in the um, center front just because this fabric is a little fidgety and I guess that I might have just cut that a little bigger by mistake or sewn the skirt um, panels a little shorter by mis a little narrower by mistake. But um, it looks cute when it looks purposeful when it is actually worn on me. So that is what matters. You got the full view with just the belt on. Got a machine hem, just like the sleeves here. And then we got a view of the back here. Those wrinkles will not be there um, because it'll be actually taut. I, I mean, I'm able to pull it much tauter when it's not on the dress form because it kind of sticks to the dress form a little bit. But here's another garment and a half, I guess. Done. I am just going to show a little bit of this project. This is a project I'm working on in collaboration with a local museum. And this is not the final project. This is actually the mock-up. And so this gabardine is simply polyester. And, but I've been working on it all day. I did the skirt yesterday and I sewed all the top stitching onto all of the uh, pocket flaps and the pockets are over there on the table ready to be sewn on basted on the uniform also has a belt I got my insignias the rest of my insignias are coming in the mail the collar's done that's top stitch and so are the shoulder and so are the shoulder straps here and also um, during World War II they had this diagonal stitching here so you would actually like attach your rank right there where the stitch lines met so this is a uniform actually and it consists of four pieces the skirt the jacket the belt and the beret which i will also make as well so here you got a little sneak peek of this ensemble i have the 1949 brown dress all cut out and I have everything pinned together for the first stage of sewing. 
I have the back piece here, the darts in the center back seam are sewed. I have the front pieces, the darts are pinned. I have the sleeve pieces, the sleeve facings are sewn. I have the um, second collar, like I have the collar piece, which is also the second lapel. I have that pinned together. The facings well, need to be sewn on after all this stuff is done. And with the skirts, I have, there's two front pieces and two back pieces. They're um, pinned together at the center front and center back seam respectively. And also the pocket pieces sewn on on the right hand side. Only one pocket in this dress because I have to put in a side zipper in this dress. Because I would just split the collar in the back and put in like a center back zipper. However, the zipper I have for this dress is not long enough to do that. So side zipper it is. So that means only one pocket in this dress. I have finished the sleeves for this 1949 dress. They have cute little cuffs on them here. Sorry, that's a little bit of iron shine. I put on the iron shoe, and so hopefully that won't happen again. And then I also finished the skirt. The skirt here is inside out. Um, and I like to sew the hem when I am entirely done with the dress, just so the skirt has the most time to hang. And then here is the pocket. This is the inside of the front, so therefore the pocket is folded over to the front of the skirt because you put your hand in your pocket towards the front of your body. And so that's why you want the pocket to be towards the front of the skirt. And then here's the other sleeve here. And then moving on to the table, I have the front. The darts are sewn, and I have also sewn and ironed the facing. And there's also no iron shine because I put the iron shoe on. And then I also have sewn the collar and other lapel. And then the back is all sewn together and that's the back facing. And so what's gonna happen is that I will sew the front to the back at the shoulder seam. And then this, extra, this collar piece and second lapel will be sewn, like this part right here will be sewn to the back of the bodice. And then this part will be sewn kind of in tangent with the facing line and then it will look like uh there we go it'll look kind of like that when it is open there and then i left a little bit of space here when i sew the facing and so i can sew the back facing to all to the shoulder seam there and then it'll hide this raw edge and if the collar um if the back neck edge if it comes. Basically, if you see a little bit of the back neck edge, you won't see this seam here. You'll just see this facing. And so far, this dress is going really nicely, and I woke up early. It's only a little after 9, like 9, 12 now, and so I started this at around 8 o'clock, so I am very happy with it. I just finished showing in the collar and all the facings, and so I just wanted to show you. It was kind of interesting um, how it all gets put together. Could I have looked at the directions of the actual pattern I have? Probably, but then where would be the fun in that? And so what I did is that this collar piece lays over the front like that, and then it gets attached to the back. And then this back piece gets attached over it. And then I sewed from shoulder seam to shoulder seam. And then I flipped it over and I pinned this, um, the facings to, this is the front facing and then the back facing. So I pinned the facing to the shoulder seam. And then I sewed this. I sewed the collar to the front piece just on the facing so the stitching doesn't show on the front of the dress. And then I sewed right on top of the where the serging line ends. And then I sewed this little part down here um, with two strands of thread by hand. And so when it is, then here's how it looks from the outside there. And so. There is a little bit of puckering, but it is all going to be covered when the collar, I'm trying to do this one-handed, when the collar is turned over like so. Here we go.
There we go. That's how this looks. There we go. There we go. And then this is how this looks like that. Um, and so you don't see really any of that puckering um, there. And so that's nice. And this part, you might see this part a little bit. I should have drafted this um, longer. And so I kind of like, like I should have drafted it like this piece part of this collar. But I didn't know... I kind of didn't know when I was drafting this how I was going to put it all together. So now that I do, I'll make a note on the pattern piece to extend it by that length. But also how it is um, put together with the buttons. There's actually going to be a button right there. And so I think that, um, will, that tension right there will keep this part rather closed. But I think the double collar this is really cute. And I'm glad that it did work out because this, I left this dress for last, um, this vintage dress for last because that double collar confused me. Um, and so I'm glad to see that it turned out well. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew the sh shoulder seams. So the side seams, um, attach the sleeves, um, attach it to the bodice, do the zipper, and then I will have to also make my matching covered belt as well. The 1949 brown dress is done and it looks so, so cute. And I'm not sure if I mentioned in other steps, but like I did buttons um, that just like the pattern um, illustration cover, I did do buttons on it. And I know when I was making the red dress, that I said I wanted to try to make buttons like a little bit like two buttons below the waist so I didn't have to do a zipper. Um, I decided to just end the buttons at the waist and do a side zipper on this one. Um, just I have since worn the red dress that I've made and um, and I think I just need just a little bit more even with the buttons going down to about here um, almost like a high hip measurement, I still need more, um, I would say just more room to get in the garment without ripping anything because I kind of tore a little bit at the center seam on the red dress. I had to restitch that. Um, and so I relinquished and did it the way the patterns from the period tell you to do and I added a side zipper. And I don't think it looks too noticeable. I know this looks I thought I had a darker colored zipper. I, I think I might have used it for another project. Um, but, and also this isn't going to be like as tight on me because the dress form is a solid um, cardboard shape and I am not, I'm more squishy. So, but I think it just looks super, super cute. Um, here are the sleeves. There are little puff sleeves here. I really, I like a puff sleeve. Um, even though the original is a little bit more smooth, I just like the puff sleeve. I think it looks cute. And I got my cuffs there. I got two darts. And I got my double collar. I'm so happy with that. And it looks super nice and smooth all the way around here. And then here it is from the back. And then all the way down, just a regular machine sewn hem. But I am so happy with it. And I procrastinated doing this dress for many weeks because I was um intimidated by the double collar and it for it to turn out so well is something I'm very pleased about and then of course there is the matching covered belt as always and this is the another garment the final vintage dress off my checklist is done